everybody. Hey, how are y'all doing today? I am Pastor DJ Manuel. This is Lady Melissa Manuel. Hello, hello. And we are from Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church in Tuskegee, Alabama. Welcome to Bible study. Yes. Uh, we are looking forward to spending some time getting into the Word of God with you tonight um, as we continue to go through my new book, Grow, Seven Spiritual Practices to Grow Your Faith. Um, if you don't have a copy of Grow, you can get a copy of it on Amazon. Uh, we want you to be able to follow along with us. We are in a very exciting chapter in Grow, my favorite chapter in yes. the entire book, and that is yes. the chapter on the practice of fasting. Yes. And so um, we're in chapter four, the practice of fasting. And this week we're going to continue by discussing the benefits of fasting. So let's yes. pray and let's get started. All right. God, thank you so much for this opportunity to look into your word, to learn more about this spiritual practice of fasting. We pray, Father, that during this time, you will allow your Holy Spirit to be our teacher, that, God, you will illuminate our minds, that, yes. Lord, you will inspire us, and that you will open up the mysteries of the word of God. Yes. And we just ask, Father, that um, you would teach and guide us tonight so that we could be better in our relationship with you. Help us to grow in our faith. Yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, amen. Amen, everybody. All right. So we got a recap. We got a good recap. I want to go two weeks back because okay. we had some very poignant points, point, poignant points that we want to Say that ten times discuss. Fast. I know, right? <laughs> that we want to share because I think it's befitting for us to just remember these things. And we talked about the four elements of fasting remember we talked about that just type yes in the comments if you remember us talking about the four elements of fasting we talked about afflicting the what the body yes afflicting the body discomfort by abstaining from food we talked about affliction of the mind that was the second thing discomfort of examining oneself to recall sins against god and others that mm. meant that means that during our time of fasting, we have to sit with and recall what are the things that I've done that have, <clears throat> you know, caused grievances against others, God, even myself. Okay, okay. So. Can I, I want to jump in here. Sure. To add something. Okay. That came up last week. I want to put this over here. Okay. All right. So last week we talked about fasting mm -hmm. not only being a time for us to search ourselves and to address the sins in our lives okay but also missed opportunities missed opportunities that there were times when God commanded us to do things mm -hmm. that we failed to do or yeah. we just decided not to do when he said to show compassion to people or we just mm -hmm. decided to withhold our compassion mm -hmm. um, to care for people and we withheld our care we right. missed opportunities to be used by God mm -hmm. and those things are just as devastating as sin because right. those are things that those are opportunities God is inviting us to join him in the right. work that he's doing and we missed those chances so we talked about sins of commission which means sins that we committed. Mm -hmm. and we also talked about where you're describing sins of omission, things that we omitted, that God gave us the opportunity to do, and we just, we didn't take them up on the opportunity. Yeah, things like so, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. something that we could, you know, some of us are going to go into fasting, we're going to find out yeah. God's going to bring up to us things that we haven't forgiven people That's for. right. That's and right. those, those are things that separate us from God or stop us from getting close enough to God. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to point out, it's, it's not just those sins that we commit, like you right. said, it's the ones that we omit as well. That's right. Like yeah. when, when you're a husband and you don't love your wife, you're commanded, husbands love your wives. That's right. You know, wives reverence your husband. They're just things we're told to do mm -hmm. in Scripture that when we're not doing those things, we're not as Christ-like as we think we are. Right. Okay. Right. So let's remember Absolutely that as right. well, that that's going to come up in our minds, too, as we search ourselves. Right. So afflicting the body, afflicting the mind. The third thing was afflicting the soul. Mm -hmm. Discomfort of accepting responsibility for sins and confessing those sins to God. So, yes, God has helped us. The Holy Spirit has brought those things uh, those sins to our remembrance. Yes. Now we got to sit with them 
and actually take ownership. You got to own it. You got to take ownership and say, yes, I did this because the the uh, temptation is to say, well, they made me do it. Yeah, I'm justified because, you know, this was the yeah. situation and, and I was just getting them back. No, 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 no. Right. No. Or, or, you know, I, I was just, I was just going to leave them to the Lord. I'm not, you know, I, but what was your motive? Wait. You know, was your motive pure when you said that? Or were you saying that in a passive aggressive way, meaning, meaning, you know, there was no real love there for that person when you said you were going to pray and leave them to the Lord. It was kind of like a blow off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to leave them to the Lord. I'm going to let the Lord handle it. So it's about the intention and the motive. But you have to sit there and own during this time of fasting. And we're going into Lent. That's why we're talking about this as in the present tense. But you have to. That's afflicting your soul when you, mm -hmm. when you have literally to own it. have to own it. Even when yeah. you you have to own the things that you say, well, I did it, but I couldn't help myself. You still yeah. got to own the fact yeah. that you did it. That's right. You know, so it's, it's not just that you had something that happened between you and another person. Yeah. It, it just might be some temptation you fell to mm -hmm. that you have to own that you did that. Right. And that it right. was not right and that God is right. Mm -hmm. And see, that's when we you know, really start to put this in perspective that, yeah. you know, we're trying to make sure that we're reaching God's yes. holy standards. So yes. that's and, and it makes so much sense um, because that's something many people rarely do. We rarely stop and say, you know, take ownership and say, I'm sorry, you know, stop and take ownership and say, please forgive me, go back. And so, Affliction of the mind, and then the last that one. That was the soul. The soul, excuse mm -hmm. me. And then uh, renewal of the spirit. So engagement with God in prayer, reading of the scripture, and worship. So we are not only, we are abstaining from food or something that uh, we decide that we're abstaining from. Something we feel like we have to have. You know, like yeah, we'll Pastor get into more said. Detail with that. Yeah, but I'm yeah. just saying uh, what you said last the week before. If you're um, you don't like peanut butter cookies, and you say, "Well, I'm just gonna fast from peanut butter cookies." Well, what good is that gonna do? That was not that was not, was a, not sacrifice. a sacrifice. Yeah. So we're gonna discuss that a little bit more later. So afflicting the body, the mind, the soul, and then renewal of the spirit. We have to during this fasting engage in prayer. Yep. Make sure that we're praying. Make sure that we're reading the scripture. Not just reading, but studying the scripture. That's good. You go back to chapter one, the practice of study. Mm -hmm. There is a whole chapter on how to do that. And you're going to search and dig deep. And maybe you're searching even more on fasting. Yes. Something that, you know, is 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 going to help you right now. Something that you are interested in knowing, but studying, reading the scripture, and then worship. Can you just tell us really briefly, you mentioned worship uh, a couple of weeks ago and why we need to worship during our time of fasting. Okay. Um, before I do that, I just okay. want to re remind everyone that last week I shared with you that you had an opportunity to go a little bit deeper mm -hmm. by studying, using those study tools in chapter one of Grow to look at Isaiah 58 yep. to learn a little bit more about fasting. But mm -hmm. why do we need to worship? Well, mm -hmm. worship is a spiritual practice. Yes. And and we have, um, we've already had the chapter on worship. We did. And so we understand from going through the practice of worship in the, in the Grow Book that it mm -hmm. is one of the ways we engage with God. It's one mm -hmm. of the ways that we express our thanksgiving toward God. Yep. It's one of the ways that we ensure that we put God back on the throne in mm -hmm. our hearts, that he is in his proper place and we are in our proper place. That's right. That we are engaging with him, acknowledging him in worship, his yes. greatness, his goodness, his mercy, his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And the more we do that in mm -hmm. our daily lives, and especially during this time of fasting, it helps us with that third step. Which is? Afflicting the soul. Yes. Because... Worship puts things back in its right perspective. We're how hum holy and how God is, how humble we are. Yes. How humble we should be. Mm -hmm. And then so when we start, you know, confessing these sins to mm -hmm. God, 
and, and owning them, we yeah. have the right perspective. Absolutely, absolutely. So remember those elements. Go back in the chapter and, and review those. During this time of fasting, take this book as a guide. You know, go back through. If you get lost, if you feel like uh, you're forgetting something, go back and, and refresh yourself. Yeah. Then last week, last week we talked about the requirements of fasting. Yes. We said during our time of fasting, God wants us to, and there were three requirements that I pulled out of um, what you discussed in the mm -hmm. book, and I just summarized it as God wants us to acknowledge our sins. Mm -hmm. God wants us to allow ourselves to feel all the, all, everything that the Holy Spirit brings to our remembrance not shrugging it off, not trying to escape it when it feels difficult or because it feels heavy for us because the Holy Spirit is going to be there to help us lift that heavy yeah, earth. He's the guide throughout the That's fasting right. process. This is not something we have to do on our own. It is. The Holy Spirit is going to be right there with us. And I will tell you, the yeah. Holy Spirit will take you to some places in your heart and in your mind that you may not have expected mm -hmm. that during your time of fasting and praying God may reveal to you or he may show you people he wants you to pray for mm -hmm. during that time yep. or issues he wants you to pray for he may show you opportunities that during this time you could be mm -hmm. used by him and that's important because one of the things we learned last week by mm -hmm. looking at Isaiah 58 was that one of the end results of fasting was that God expected his people during the time of fasting to exemplify what it meant to be his people. Right. To not uh, put heavy burdens on the people that worked for them, to not mistreat mm -hmm. others. We read that in um, Isaiah, Isaiah 58 verses mm -hmm. like 6 through 9 where he mm -hmm. says, you know, this is the kind of fast I want yeah. where you feed the poor, you help those um, you know, you clothe the naked. Mm -hmm. He's he. There were opportunities that were presented, as well as mm -hmm. um, the the things that we have to do within ourselves mm -hmm. to acknowledge sin and those missed opportunities that yeah. uh, to do His will. So we have to look at fasting from that perspective and just know that God may take you to some places. He may mm -hmm. birth a new idea in you, a new ministry in you, a deeper level of worship. There may be some things that are going to come out of this fasting that you did not expect, but just be open, as Lady Manuel said, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I need you to remember that we're talking to people who may not understand everything that you you say when you, you say things like uh, a new ministry may come out or uh, things that you may not expect. Give us an example of what you mean by that. That's because good. I don't want to just, I don't want to leave that open for interpretation because it's important for us to know what God is doing so that we can be looking for okay. those things that God may be doing. So you're, let's, let's say you're in this time of prayer and fasting mm -hmm. and you are, um, you have, you know that you have certain abilities, skills, Mm -hmm. um, talents. You may even have uh, certain resources at your disposal. And the Lord may put it on your heart. Mm -hmm. Use that resource to accomplish my will in this particular way. It may be, hey, during this time of fasting, God mm -hmm. is showing me I've got a closet full of coats that I don't wear. Yeah. This is an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, or he's put an idea in my mind mm -hmm. uh, to get a group of people together to talk about some issues, some family issues, other mm -hmm. things. And maybe that's the new ministry that God can use you to help families or to help that group of people grow in their yep. faith and get closer to God. Or so, a personal ministry or a of personal doing that. Ministry. Yeah. Right. So you have, um, there may be opportunities where God will show you something mm -hmm. that he wants you to do. That yep. he, he wants to, I know I use the term birth a new ministry, yep. where he may show you something that he wants you to begin to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe for a season, maybe for a long time, mm -hmm. but it's an opportunity if you're, if you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you there. Right, absolutely. And uh, when we first started this book uh, in the practice of study, the practice of worship, we went back 
we talked about how to to hear from God, how to listen for mm-hmm. for God's voice. So you may do well to go back and look at some of those uh, previous videos because it's going to help you understand even more how to listen for God during this time of prayer and fasting. So again, last week we discussed the requirements of fasting, which God wants to acknowledge our wants us to acknowledge our sins. Mm-hmm. He wants uh, to wants to help us to re- uh, just allow the Holy Spirit to bring those things, uh, sins and, and um, transgressions back to our remembrance mm-hmm. so that we can repent, mm-hmm. receive forgiveness, and be restored to our proper place with God. That's what this whole thing is about. It's about getting us closer to God. That's it. God wants us to, he doesn't want anything between us us and himself. Yeah, he doesn't so, want he doesn't want um, a, a lack of devotion, a yeah. lack of commitment. He doesn't want sin. He doesn't want anything that is going to get between us, even That's distractions. Right. Because you may go into a season mm-hmm. of fasting, and God will reveal to you some distractions in your everyday life. Yes, that He wants you to to give those things over, to give them mm-hmm. up, and to and to put them in their proper place and perspective. Right. Instead of them being the most important thing in your life, God mm-hmm. needs to be the most important thing. In your Absolutely. Life. Absolutely. So that's what we discussed last week. This week we're moving even further, and I'm excited about this because. We're going to talk about the benefits of fasting. Benefits. Everybody wants some benefits. Yes, we want Lord, benefits. where are my benefits? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about the benefits of fasting. Okay. And we're going to go to page 73 okay. in the Grow Book. And um, I just want to read the first paragraph. If you have your book, you can turn there with us. And again, the benefits of fasting. And Pastor Manuel writes here. In the remaining portion of Isaiah 58, God details national blessings, talking about the children of Israel, national blessings that would come upon the people when they truly afflict their souls and seek the Lord through fasting. Mm -hmm. These blessings were available for the people because because of their relationship with God. I'm sorry. These blessings were available for the people because their relationship with God was restored. That's That's important. Earlier in Matthew 6, chapter 6, Jesus revealed how true fasting in secret could lead to open rewards from God. Mm -hmm. And we've already seen in Leviticus chapter 16 that fasting on the Day of Atonement benefited the children of Israel in the form of spiritual cleansing. Yes. And we too can benefit from fasting in the same manner. So even before we get to uh, some of the benefits. specific benefits, mm-hmm. uh, Pastor Manuel talks about here those spiritual benefits mm-hmm. that God provides for for us as well. He So let, let yeah, me just put it ahead. this way. Let's, let's put it this way. Mm-hmm. If you could imagine that you took another step to get closer to God, mm-hmm. what would be the benefits? If I'm if I'm taking a step to get closer to God, I'm mm-hmm. getting closer to Him in my worship. I'm getting closer mm-hmm. to Him through prayer and fasting. I'm getting closer to Him by having sin removed from my life. I'm having I'm getting closer to Him by joining Him in the work that He is doing. Mm-hmm. Those benefits. Yeah. Are what we're talking about. They're just general benefits that all of us can receive. But we don't know. We may not know exactly what um, what those benefits are. We know what we want to get. You know what I'm saying? We want to have. We want to get everything. Everything that God's got, we want it. <laughs> but this is an opportunity for us to learn more about some very specific some benefits. very yeah. specific benefits that. God uh, has promised, right? Or that we see um, described in the Scripture. Okay. And so, again, in that first paragraph, Pastor Manuel shows us that when our relationship with God is restored, as in how it was restored for the children of Israel in Isaiah chapter fifty-eight, we can access 
-hmm. God's blessings. That opens the door. Just being restored back to that relationship with God gives us access to God's blessings. And Matthew chapter 6, he showed us, he, he's telling us, Pastor Manuel's telling us, true fasting leads to open rewards. When we fast in secret, God rewards us openly. Yeah, those are the things that Jesus said. And he, 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 you told us that wasn't saying, you know, you have to do do it in secret and you can't tell anybody yeah, like yeah. If, well, if you're going out to eat with a friend and you can't eat certain things it's okay to tell them but God is talking about let's make your sure we, intention yeah, let's make sure we understand your why motiva- okay. the, Go ahead. The, the why behind that Go ahead. is that there were individuals in Jesus day mm-hmm. that went out of their way to make themselves appear to be fasting so mm-hmm. that people would look at them and talk about how pious and how holy they were. Mm. And so they were putting on a show, basically. Putting on a show. Yeah. And and so what Jesus is saying is, look, you don't have to put on a show mm-hmm. to let people know that you're fasting mm-hmm. or to appear to be holy. Mm-hmm. Because the real results are gonna show when you spent your time with God. That's right. You know, so That's it's right. all right if you're you know, somebody invites you out and you say, Hey, I'm fasting right now mm-hmm. um, so that they can they can know that you're fasting. I mean it's it, it's not. It's nothing wrong with with letting someone know yep. that you're fasting. So that's Absolutely. that's what he was talking about there. Absolutely. And then of course uh, the spiritual cleansing from Leviticus chapter sixteen. That's right. So Absolutely. let's get to the first of these um, benefits. Okay. The first one being answered prayer. Yes. Can you can you uh, start this so that I can check? I, I can. I want to make sure that everybody is able to hear us and see us online. Um, so, Pastor Manuel, here is we go. Going to read that for us. So, this is Ezra, uh, Ezra chapter here. eight, verses twenty-one through twenty-three, and it says, "Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our God, to seek from Him the right way for us and our little ones, um, and all our possessions." For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road, because we had spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, Mm -hmm. but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. Mm -hmm. So we fasted and entreated our God for this, and he answered our prayer. Yep. Absolutely. And I'm going to read it from the NLT because it it helps me. I hope it, I mean. Go ahead. So, <laughs> um, it says, and thereby the Ahava Canal, I gave orders for all of us to fast and humble ourselves before our God. We prayed that he would give us, we prayed that he would give us a safe journey and protect us, our children and our goods as we traveled. For I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to accompany us and protect us from the enemies along the way. After all, we had told the king our God's hand of protection is on all who worship him. But his fierce anger rages against those who abandon him. So we fasted and earnestly prayed and that our God would take care of us and he heard our prayer. So before we even get into uh, this benefit of answered prayer, can you just tell us just a little bit about who Ezra was and what's happening behind the scenes in this scripture? Okay. The reason Ezra asked God. So Ezra was um, leading a group of Israelites out of captivity. Mm -hmm. They had just been set free by a decree from King Cyrus. Mm -hmm. Ezra is about to lead them out of captivity, and they have all of the possessions that were taken um, out of the temple when Nebuchadnezzar um, took the people captive. So all that gold and silver and precious things that went inside the temple of God, plus all of their personal possessions, and there were children with them, Mm -hmm. and there was concern. There was a bit of concern that when they got ready to leave, that as they were traveling along the road, they may run into bandits, they may run into raiders, people who would try to steal and take from them. Mm -hmm. And so um, Ezra decided before we 
leave, let's all sit down. We're all gathered together. We're mm-hmm. going to encamp together. And we're going to humble ourselves. And we're going to seek God. We're going to fast. Yeah. So fasting was a part of the humbling themselves to seek an answer from God. Mm-hmm. It was their... So think about it this way. I can ask God to help me. Mm-hmm. And I can ask God to answer my prayer. Mm-hmm. But I could also search myself, make sure I'm in the right frame of mind, the yes. right my heart is right, um, confess my sins so that there's no barrier between God and I that's right. as I ask him for that prayer request. That's right. And that's what Ezra is doing. He's saying mm-hmm. to all the people, let's let's make sure that we're right before God mm-hmm. um, and, and go to him in prayer and pray for our safety. And the Bible says he heard and answered their prayer. God heard them and answered their prayer. Three things that I saw there. Ezra humbled himself, Mm -hmm. which we must also do, humble ourselves. Ezra engaged with God in prayer, Mm -hmm. just like Mm -hmm. we must engage with God. He asked specifically for what he wanted. Very specifically. And we must fast, like you said, to remove any barriers of sin that may hinder our prayers. So when we do that, one of the benefits of fasting and clearing out that clutter is that God will hear us. And so that's one of the things that I I want to bring out about this. I know that we're going to be entering into this period of fasting and praying Mm -hmm. for Lent. Yes. But please understand that at different times in your life, Mm -hmm. things that are going on in your everyday life, You may face something that you say, I want to go the extra mile. I want to do more than just pray. I want to truly seek God. I want to fast and pray and seek his face. It could be uh, a loved one that is sick. It could Mm -hmm. be a situation where you're trying to determine where you're moving into a new house or you're trying to determine uh, which job to apply for or or which place you want to work. Mm -hmm. It could be any type of life circumstance that you may determine we want to fast and pray. We want to consecrate ourselves. We want to, you know, it could just be you. It could be everybody in your household. Mm -hmm. Hey, our family, we're going to fast and pray Mm -hmm. for this particular thing we're going to seek God for. Right. And I know that... um, I've talked to some other pastors that at various times when their church was about to do something, um, uh, something big, something major, Mm -hmm. that they would fast and pray. I'll give you a great example. My good friend in Birmingham, uh, Reverend Dr. Tyree Anderson at First Baptist Church Inslee was preparing to host the Alabama State Missionary Baptist Convention. Mm -hmm. And he and I were talking and I asked him, I said, you know, how's the church responding, you know, to hosting this big event? Yeah. He said, you know what? I told them we were going to fast Mm -hmm. for 21 days before, um, uh, I think it was 21 days. It was a certain number of days. He declared Mm -hmm. a fast, just like Ezra did. He declared a fast for all of the people who were in the church and those who were going to be serving at the state convention before the convention started. Mm -hmm. And he said he had a few people who were like, I don't really know if I want to do this. But he said once the convention started... Mm -hmm. And they began to serve and mm-hmm. they they realized God had humbled them and God had worked on their hearts in such a way that they were able to deal with individuals who were irritable, individuals who were grumpy, individuals who were cold because it was it snowed one day while we were there. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of things that were going on behind the scenes that his church had to deal with, but his members were ready because they had gotten themselves spiritually fit Mm -hmm. through prayer and fasting. So you can, like I said, in your family, Mm -hmm. in your office, on your job, if there are people who are willing to do it with you, um, you can set a time of fasting just like Ezra did for answer prayer. It can be for new sales for your business. It can be for whatever you think it is. Just think of fasting as another option. It's another gear in in your ability to connect with God. That's right. Absolutely. And so very good explanation there. There's another benefit. We're we're only going to get to two. You listed four in this chapter. What was that? I was hoping we could get more of them, but I just... We don't have that don't kind of time. Calm down. 
Okay, so the second benefit is spiritual favor and direction. Can you read Nehemiah uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 for okay, us? Okay, so I'm reading this from the New Living Translation. Is it in the book as well? Yes. Okay, so it's in the book yes. in the New King James Version, mm -hmm. but I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. Okay. Um, in late autumn, in the month of Kislev, in the 30th, um, sorry, 20th year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. Hanani, one of my brothers, came to visit me uh, with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about um, how things were going in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They said to me, things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and distress, mm. uh, distress, disgrace. Um, the wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. Mm. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days mm. I mourned, fasted, mm -hmm. and prayed to the God of heaven. Yes. That's what he did. Good, and so good. verse 11, verse 11 of the same chapter says, O Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. So why did, why did Nehemiah feel it was necessary to fast and pray before approaching the king? Well, there are a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, the desperation of the situation, of course, knowing that the people were in reproach and disgrace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that was something that he felt compelled to, to fast about. But when you consider the circumstance that these were people, and, and, and when you take your time and read Nehemiah chapter 1, mm -hmm. it brings to mind how they ended up in captivity in the first place. Okay. They ended up in captivity because of the sins they committed against God. Okay. And so Nehemiah, during this time of fasting, it's almost as if he's saying, Things are not well. Okay. Things are not right the way that they should be. And it may be because those sins haven't been dealt with. Mm. So he prays, Lord, for, I have sinned. My father's house has sinned. Mm -hmm. We have all sinned. Yeah. These are the things that we did, the things that originally caused us to go into captivity. Now we're right. back in the promised land and mm -hmm. we're praying for you to just, you know, bless us and take care of us. Mm -hmm. But obviously we got some things to work on. Right. And so right. he's he's seeking God for forgiveness for the nation. He's searching himself. Mm -hmm. He's searching his his whole family line. He's mm -hmm. searching all the people. And he is confessing all of those things before God in his time of prayer and fasting. And he's preparing himself to go before the king to ask for the king's favor. That's what I wanted to ask you because there's, in my understanding, you couldn't just, you couldn't simply approach the king when you wanted to. Well, that that's true. Mm -hmm. I think what we're dealing with here is that Nehemiah wanted to make sure that his request would be heard okay. because he was close to the king. He, he was, was a, close. Okay. He was a cupbearer, mm -hmm. and uh, he, it was his responsibility to make sure that the king was not poisoned. Okay. And yeah. so, and it was his responsibility to make sure that you know the wine was distributed. And mm -hmm. but, but being so close to the king, I mean, you want the person who's making sure you're not being poisoned to be somebody you know and trust. Right. So, the king. When you read Nehemiah, you find out in chapter two that the king knew Nehemiah so well, he looked at his face and knew something was wrong. Mm. It's like, you know, Nehemiah said, I've never been in this condition in the king's presence before. And the king looked at him and says, you're upset about something. Yeah. You have sorrow of heart. So it was a it was a thing where he, he knew he was going to have the opportunity to speak to the king. He just needed God to intervene. He needed God to intervene to grant him favor with the king favor for for that's his what request we're, because what he's we're making a to. request okay. Nehemiah is about to make a request when you read the book of Nehemiah he's, he's about to make a request mm -hmm. to get the materials and the authority to go back to Jerusalem 
to fix the things that are wrong, mm -hmm. help the people turn back to God and, and reestablish the city. And so God intervened through this prayer, through Nehemiah's prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. And what was the result then? The result? Because you did a whole sermon series yeah, about it was, Nehemiah. It was but, in 2020. We, yep. did a, we did a sermon series last mm -hmm. year about Nehemiah. But but the, the end result, the, the first initial result, is that the the king granted him everything he wanted. Right. Um, I would also say one of the initial results is that during this time of prayer and fasting, God revealed to Nehemiah what to ask for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was a period of time, like he said, many days, mm -hmm. that he's praying and fasting, and he is very detailed. When Nehemiah goes to the king and the king says, what do you desire? Mm -hmm. He's very detailed about right. what he's asking for. Right. And even knows how long he's going to be away to right. accomplish the goal. So God was working with Nehemiah, working within Nehemiah, mm -hmm. and also softening the heart of the king mm -hmm. to be able to hear Nehemiah's request. Yes. And ultimately, Nehemiah <laughs> takes these resources, goes back to Jerusalem, reestablishes the walls around Jerusalem and the gates that have been burned, those are repaired, and then leads reform to bring the people back to God. Mm -hmm. So that was the ultimate end of what Nehemiah was seeking. So what types of circumstances of uh, situations would prompt us to pray for God's favor? Ooh. Well, anytime you're looking for God's favor, that well, God, let's, let's God start, is... Well, let's start here. What is God's favor? It is a an extension of his goodwill and his grace toward you that you cannot earn. It is just because of he, that he is God and he loves you and you are, and you are you. That's it. It's just him being gracious toward you. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about God's favor, we think about open doors, new opportunities. Mm -hmm. We think about um, blessings being made available to mm -hmm. us. We think about even specific types of blessing, healing yeah. and things like that. So with God's mm -hmm. favor, you may be seeking God's favor to ask, you know, fasting and praying, you know, God, I'm about to submit my resume for this job. Mm -hmm. Give me favor with the individual who's doing the hiring. Mm -hmm. Give me, let let my resume not get pushed to the bottom of the pile. Right. Let me be blessed with the opportunity for this interview. Mm -hmm. uh, God, I am I am looking uh, to make some, some major changes in my life and I need some help. God, yeah. send the help that I need. Mm -hmm. Show me, give me direction on a person that will work with me and be favorable toward me. It might be a counselor that's helping you go through some difficult things in your heart and your mind. It may be mm -hmm. a, a, a physician. Lord, let me get to the right doctor. Right, right, you know, right, right. Who would, you know, you through your favor and your grace, that doctor would be able to accurately diagnose what's going on with me yes. so that I can get my health back yes. in order. So anytime you're seeking favor, you're uh -huh. seeking these, these blessings, that you know you you just can't earn them and i have a i looked up the definition right here it says just Webster, english definition yeah, yeah english yeah. definition it says favor an act of kindness beyond what is due or usual yeah it's more so, it's more than than usual Right. Uh, it's it's something that God can do for you that nobody else can do for you. Something that you're like, wait a minute, what? What just happened? How how did that happen? You know, when 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 you say, go to the store say, to buy some flowers and you buy three and the, the little old lady that's selling the flowers give you four instead. Right. You that's, know, that's uh, people say there's this uh, saying, favor ain't fair. It's not. You know, because but it's, it's like, free. how did. You know, you, you started last. How did you end up first? Well, it was God's favor. He decided that's what he wanted me to have. So I didn't I have to bribe anybody. Yep. I didn't have to steal anything. It was just God's favor. Yes, so we've explained that. Mm -hmm. So God, we we want God's favor. Mm -hmm. We may mm -hmm. fast and pray um, to receive God's favor. Mm -hmm. 
and you gave us some of those situations and circumstances just now. Mm -hmm. You explained what some of those might be. My last question tonight is, you hit on this, but I want to be, I want to just go deeper. Okay. How do we know when to fast and pray? We have a corporate opportunity coming up mm -hmm. for the time of Lent, and I know that that's a corporate uh, fasting opportunity, mm -hmm. but we're talking here about the practice of fasting. So how do we know? We know how to do We're learning how to do it. We're learning why to do it. Mm -hmm. But now, tell us when do we do it? Is it something we just decide or... How does that work? Hmm. Do we have to be prompted by God, or we just you know, you can. or maybe maybe? And I'm not giving you a chance to answer the question. No, but you're not. I'm gonna give it to you in a minute. I want to make sure you understand what I'm trying to say. Um, or is it when we feel like we're away from God, or or we need to get closer? What I just need to know. Okay. And I'm pretty sure some other people need to know as well. Right. So, so the answer is yes and yes. Um, okay. What so, did I ask you? I'm joking. <laughs> Go ahead. Girl, don't you start. <laughs> yes and yes. Um, there will be times. Of course, fasting, now that you're understanding it mm -hmm. and we're talking about it, it becomes something you cannot unsee. Right. It, it becomes something you cannot unknow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that you know that it exists, mm -hmm. it will, the Holy Spirit will be bringing it to your remembrance. Bringing what to our remembrance? The idea of fasting. Okay. So God can prompt you and, and the Lord may lead you into a season of prayer and fasting. There have been some times, there have been some times in my life that I've just come to my wife and said, you know what, I'm going to start fasting on this particular day. And, and then I just go in and, and fast and pray. Mm -hmm. um, and it may have been because I was fasting for something specific. I may mm -hmm. have been fasting and praying about a sermon series or, or just about something that's happening in our lives. Mm -hmm. So there are some times that the Lord will just, you know, you're in your time of prayer, you're in your time of studying, you're in your time of reading God's word. He may speak to your heart and say, you know what, you need to spend some time in fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's one. Another thing that you just brought up, though, mm -hmm is feeling the need to do it. Yeah. And and this is what I'm going to say about feeling the need to do it. Yeah. Once you have truly sought the Lord in fasting and prayer, mm -hmm. and you have felt the benefit, the spirit, not just the things like answer prayer, but just the getting closer to God, mm -hmm. then when you get to times and seasons in your life that you feel like you're far away from God, Yeah. You'll remember how you felt when you fasted. Okay. Yeah. And, and that may drive you to say, you know what? I need to fast and pray. I feel I'm far away from God. Let me fast and pray. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you looked at your life mm -hmm. and, and you've seen that some things are just kind of getting off course. Yeah. You know, maybe you heard a sermon where we talk about being righteous and holy and dealing with sin and you know that you're off course. Mm -hmm. Then you realize, you know what? I need to fast and pray because I right. because I have a strong desire to get this thing out of my life. Yes, and so it, you will. It's a spiritual practice, mm -hmm. and once you once you truly understand the benefits, once yes. you truly understand and have that feeling of being refreshed mm -hmm. and and being so much closer to God and mm -hmm. that light feeling when you yeah. let let sin go, yeah. you know, then yeah. you'll crave it. You'll crave this desire to seek God through through prayer and fasting. That's good. That's very good. So, but but there are corporate opportunities. And, and like I said before, I think the first time we did Lent as a church, there were a couple of people who came to me and said, can we do this again? They, mm -hmm. they enjoyed the experience and mm -hmm. wanted to do it again. So there may be other corporate opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and you may be creating some of those yourself, like mm -hmm. with a group of people or just mm -hmm. people in your household. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, you you will you will crave fasting just like many of us right now are craving worship yeah. because we're not able to gather together like we used right, to. Right, so right. it as a spiritual practice it will become a part of your of your your spiritual life. Awesome. 
that makes a lot of sense. And, and, and I ask because it may not be something that we have practiced in the past. In yeah. the past. Uh, normally, you know, when I think about fasting and praying, like you said, it's something very specific. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now that I consider it a practice, I'm, I'm probably going to go even deeper, you know, more often. Um, all the things you just said. Uh, normally, I'm, I'm, I'm praying. Prayer keeps me close to God. Prayer, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. worship keeps me close to God. Understanding the scriptures and, 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 you know, fleshing them out keeps me close to God. But I think really not just, not just for specific things, but continuing in the fasting, continuing in the practice mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of fasting is going to deepen yeah, that connection. And, and the yeah. fasting, let me just point this out. Mm-hmm. The fasting isn't always just for us. Mm-hmm. Believe, you know, God may call upon you to fast and pray for somebody else. Wow. Or okay. someone else's situation. Right. I know when I read in the Psalms, there's a place where David says, you know, about his enemies, that he, he spent time laboring in prayer over mm-hmm. his enemies. Mm-hmm. There are going to be some times God's going to call you to fast and pray for somebody else yes. because you are made aware of the issues in their lives mm-hmm. and, and you just feel compelled to do that for them. That's right. And so... Um, it, it is a spiritual practice, and you brought up something very, um, very important. I want to point out. Okay. In the Bible, in Bible times, especially in Jesus' day, mm-hmm. when he spoke of fasting, he says, "And you, when you fast." Yes. Well, when you do your homework and you study the scriptures a little bit more, you will find out that there were certain fasts that were done on a monthly basis. There okay. were some that were done even on. Some people fasted, you know, once a week. Okay. To constantly search themselves and to try to get closer to God. So it, it, it can become a regular spiritual practice mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. that, how can I put this? You may decide to fast and don't always think of fasting as 40 days, seven days, or a whole day. Mm-hmm. You may fast for just part of a day. Mm-hmm. There were times when I, when I really was trying to understand who God was mm-hmm. early in my walk with God mm-hmm. where I would just choose. Yeah. You know, I'm fasting on my lunch break. Yeah. I would take that time for my lunch break, fast, don't eat anything, and pray. I would be praying and reading scripture, fasting and praying on my lunch break. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was a, a sacrifice I was making for God. Right. And I, w- I would do that sometimes, you know, a couple of times a month. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just know that it, it doesn't have to be, you know, really huge that you're going to fast for 24 hours or mm-hmm. something like that, the time period. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're fasting personally, you can do everything from a lunch break to half a day to sun up to sundown or mm-hmm. a whole day or two days. Uh, start small if you've never done it before. Yeah. And, and But just know that you have the flexibility to add this spiritual practice mm-hmm. into your regular rhythm of life. It's about being intentional. Yes. More so than um, how long or, or right. what. It's about being intentional and saying, I'm setting aside this time for God in, in a fast. That's Am it. I right? Yes. So we, right. you, you mentioned you were talking about um, the, the time links and how on pages 78 and 79, uh, Pastor Manuel goes into, it's in the section called Put It Into Practice. And we're going to go into that a little bit next week, a little mm-hmm. bit more. But prior to next week, we want you to go ahead and read that because it helps us to determine what we're fasting from, right. what we're fasting from. and. And that's important because yeah. Wednesday, when we get together next Wednesday for Bible study, mm-hmm. Lent has already begun. It begins right. on Wednesday. That's right. So before Wednesday, 
read through that, put it into practice sec section, mm -hmm. and then and then you can get some ideas on coming up with the decision on how wh which which thing you're going to declare you know, a time limit. Yeah, you're, you're going to cover your mouth. Are you going to not eat certain foods or you know all of that in that section? Go ahead. Sorry. No, what? I was getting an interview, so. <laughs> It's all right. Well, I was well, just well, going to read the topic, read the um the topics. Right. So declare a time limit. Lent has been determined for us. Yes. It begins Wednesday the seventeenth. Mm -hmm. It ends on Saturday, April third. Yep. And so that's the Saturday before Easter, which is April fourth. Mm -hmm. And you do not fast on the Sundays during that time period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'll fast six days a week, but do not fast on Sundays beginning February, Wednesday, February 17th through Saturday evening at sundown on April 3rd. It's, it's not more of it. It's, you said do not. It's more of a God did, he said that we You are should, released you are from released fasting from, on Sundays. Because that's a day, that's the Sabbath. That's, that's a, a day, day you're of, spending with the Lord. Yes, yes. So um, decide what you'll be fasting from. Schedule time for reflection. So be intentional about the time that mm -hmm. you're going to put into prayer. Uh, plan to engage with God and accept God's cleansing. So when we go through this time of fasting, we want to literally put these things into practice. We know what it is. We know why it is. We know how. We know when. We know when. Um, and so now we just have to do it. And the end of this chapter, put it into practice, is going to help us to actually do the work. Um, what, there was, there was one other thing that I wanted to say. Oh, I think some people may not know exactly what Lent is. We keep talking about it, but tell, tell us, what Lent is and why it's important okay. to the Christian faith. Okay. So in various Christian denominations, mm -hmm. and denominations are groups of believers, groups of churches. So you think of the Methodist Church as being one denomination, the AME Church being another denomination, Baptist Church as being an, you know another. Mm -hmm. um, there there are some of these groups that practice this this season of Lent. Mm -hmm. It's forty six days, of which of which forty you fast and pray, leading up to Easter. Um, and so during that period, the forty days are significant when you compare them to the 40 days of prayer and fasting Jesus did in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And so during these 40 days it's it's designed to reinforce you know arguably the most important day in our faith mm -hmm. and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so during this time there's a lot of scripture reading, there's prayers and there's fasting mm -hmm. and during this time we are drawing closer to mm -hmm. God, we're drawing closer to understanding the sacrifice that he made by sending mm -hmm. his son to mm -hmm. die for us. Is it like a memorial really? In a, in a way it's like a memorial because but, it's, a, but it's an opportunity too. An opportunity. It's an opportunity to really um, get closer to God. The reason I ask that, you know, because the um, the the uh, ordinance of the Lord's Supper, He said, "Do this in remembrance of Me." Every time we take communion, it's an opportunity to remember mm -hmm. what Christ did for us. Right. That His blood was shed for us, as it symbolizes with the wine. Um, his body was broken for us symbolizing the breaking of the bread. So what I'm saying is... This is not an ordinance. This is not an ordinance. It's not an ordinance. Okay. Um, because this is... Jesus never told us you have 40 to. days before I do... Before I... You know, before you celebrate... Easter. Easter fast. That's not, that's not in the Bible. So okay. So it's not an ordinance. Right. Like you said, it's more of a memorial. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a remembering. But remembering. it's also a... a a drawing closer. Yes. Um, I think after this season of fasting and praying, Easter will make so much 
more sense to us. What do you mean? Typically, if there's a reading plan that's uh, that's for Lent, mm -hmm. that reading plan will be all from the New Testament, okay. and it will include the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay. So that in your reading and your prayer and your studying, you are connecting with the events surrounding the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus got Christ. Got it, got it. So this is a time to make Easter more significant in your life. Easter meaning the the commemorating the day when Jesus was... When Jesus rose from the grave. Yes. Yeah, but it's that whole weekend, that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, when he was crucified and, and then when he arose from the grave. So that's, that is the core of the gospel message. That is the foundation of our faith. Yes. The fact that Jesus Christ, you know, bled, died, and rose from the grave. It means everything to our faith. Mm -hmm. And believing and understanding that story mm -hmm. is a prerequisite to being a Christian. Right. You know, you read in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, where it says, if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, mm -hmm. we will be saved. So yes. that that celebration that we do each year for Easter or Resurrection Sunday mm -hmm. um, in the Christian faith is vitally important. And Lent helps us to connect with it better. Right. Absolutely. So let's show you, we're going to show you the devotional that we're using. Um, there are many devotionals that are available online. Uh, some are digital, some are, you know, free. You can find yeah, there are free resources. devotionals yeah, you can, everywhere. You it's can not, go into the Bible app and find yeah, a Lent yeah, reading yeah, yeah. plan or a Lent devotional. So, you know, we're not saying you have to buy this one. We're right. saying... Um, this is the one that our church has chosen to use so that we can stay on track with one another. Now, we had some that were already distributed um, at our church for, for our members. However, if you're not in the local area and you were not able to get one, you can go to Amazon.com and... You can download a digital copy. I think it's 99 cents. Yeah, download it um, to the Kindle app. Download it to the Kindle app. So, again, even if you're not reading this particular one, find a devotional that you can follow that will, you know, help you to... Yes. The reason why we're telling you to go to Amazon and download a digital copy is because the physical copies that were available on christianbook.com that we have announced the last couple of weeks are all sold out. That's right. They're all sold out. That's right. And as far as the church is concerned, I think we have nine copies left, mm -hmm. uh, maybe less. Mm -hmm. um, but just know that the, the physical book um, that was available on christianbook.com is sold out. So go to Amazon mm -hmm. to download a digital copy. Um, through the uh, the Kindle app, or you know, that way you could have it on your device to yep. go through it each day with us. Awesome. And what I'm going to do, um, I I think I mentioned this to you, but on Saturdays, on Saturday mornings, um, I'm going to do a. We're gonna have a Saturday summary, and we're going to look at on Zoom. It's gonna be on Zoom. Um, I'm thinking it's gonna be on Zoom. And I say that because I'm not sure if we can do it um, via online. But the point is, I want us to review mm -hmm. what we've learned or studied in our devotionals during that week. And also to hold each other accountable during this fasting time, this time of fasting. And um, support one another through this fast. Because some people have not you know, done this before. Some people may find that they need some help and some encouragement during this time of fasting. So I don't want you to have, we don't want you to have to do it alone. I mentioned that last week. And so God put that on my heart to do. So I'm going to uh, sacrifice that time. I want you all to consider sacrificing that time so that we can, and I will, um, we'll say, no, let's let's wait until you've got the details. We can announce it Sunday. I was about to say we'll we'll announce uh, we will announce it Sunday, and I was going to say I will put the details on the church.
Facebook page. So if you are subscribed to our church Facebook page and you receive notifications, just click the bell to up at the top to receive notifications. You'll see when the information comes in about uh, the Saturday summaries. Okay. And so yep. we can also put it on the church website. Church website. Okay. Yep. So um, one last thing. Bible study. Tomorrow night. We have a Thursday night Bible study that's beginning on tomorrow with Reverend James W. Jackson Sr. Yep. If you want to participate in that Bible study, go to greaterfriendship.com on our church website. There is a box there. You will see that handsome man there, and it has a place where you can give your name and your email address, and he will respond to your email mm -hmm. with the Zoom link for the Bible study, and there's also a button there for you to download the materials. Yes. So we're excited about yes. the Thursday night Bible study that is going to begin tomorrow at 6 o'clock p.m. with I'm Reverend excited. Jackson. That's going to be great. That, yeah. That's going to be awesome. Yes. Um, because I know there are several of you who participated in his Bible study at the church, yeah. and we haven't done that since the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So he has stepped out into the digital world, and yes. he is going to make Bible study available. You'll be able to ask questions and participate. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. It's another way to engage. So, to um, engage. Again, we have so many different ways for you to engage, and that's something uh, our vision this this year is legendary faith, and we're focusing on connections. Yes. So these are opportunities for us to connect, for us to connect with our church family, friends, people that are connected with our church. Um, so yeah, thank you all for joining us tonight. We're going to go ahead and close it out yep, yep. in prayer. Wait, well, do um, we have any questions? Any questions and comments? I, I think what happened was uh, we may have we were all connected here, but I'm not sure if everyone saw the beginning of the service for some reason um, through Vimeo. So we may have to reload. And I'm saying that because I don't have a lot of comments okay. on here this evening. Um, let's see, let's go back and see. Sister Wanda Miles is with us. Uh, our cousin Maxie Bishop Jr. He said, thanks for clearing that up about the fasting time links. Very, very uh, important. That's yeah. something that a lot of people uh, may not have been clear about. So yep, yep. definitely. And thanks for Sister Belinda Patrick. We know that you uh, you all have called, probably Deacon Patrick as well, have called in. We know that you're there. Thanks for sending us that text message. Um, yeah, so thanks you all for joining us tonight. Pastor Manuel, will you close us out in prayer? Let's pray. God, thank you for this time of study. Thank you for uh, just helping us to understand a little bit better this concept of this practice of fasting. And we pray, Father, that we will not be overwhelmed by it, but that you will help guide us through this process as we prepare our hearts and minds to enter into a season of fasting beginning next Wednesday. And so, Lord, um, we just ask for your grace and mercy over all of our, our families right now as we continue to battle this pandemic. Yes, sir. We also ask, Lord, for your blessings on the Thursday night Bible study that will yes, begin uh, on tomorrow. And uh, we just thank you so much for Reverend Jackson and his willingness to do that. And we want to thank you also for the willingness that Sister Manuel has to do these Saturday conversations to help us, Lord, to understand uh, that we don't have to go through this season of fasting and prayer alone. Yes, God. And so, God, we thank you for that that opportunity to engage as well. Continue to bless and watch over our congregation, God. We just need you so much during this time. We yes. give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 All right, everybody. Well, we love you. We appreciate you all joining us, and we will see you on Sunday morning. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.